Hey guys, and welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks so much for joining us today. So by now you should start figuring out that if I'm doing the intro all by myself, it's more than likely a cooking vlog. <laughs> and it is, it is time to cook something with you guys. And it's something you may have heard of, maybe not. Um, but I'm definitely doing some alterations. Have you heard of Tuscan chicken or Tuscan salmon? Um, so basically a really nice um, sauce to put over your salmon or your chicken. Well, I am making mushroom, tusk, uh, Tuscan mushroom. That's what I should say. Um, so I am going to show you the ingredients I'm going to be using. I'm going to have a few alterations to the way I'm making it because I want to use what I have on hand. I don't want to end up running to the store to get specific ingredients. Um, we can play with it and then make it our own, right? And it should be super easy. It should be super quick. <laughs> um, but it is. I believe it is. The only thing that's going to take like the longest is sauteing all the mushrooms, but only because I'm making like a double batch. Um, I want to saute some mushrooms to leave to the side for another meal that I have planned. And then half of it is going to go into today's meal. So let me go ahead and show you the ingredients that I'm going to be using, give you some tips for alterations or the traditional things that I'm making alterations for. And um, let's get to cooking. It looks like a lot, right? Yeah, it's definitely a lot. So obviously the star of the show here is going to be the mushrooms. I have a really big pack here. Um, it's a pound, a pound of sliced white button mushrooms, I believe. and I'm actually going to do the Tuscan mushroom over gnocchi. So I have some gnocchi out. We're going to pan fry that as well. You should be using sun-dried tomatoes in like the traditional recipe. I don't have sun-dried tomatoes, but I have a ton of cherry tomatoes. So why not use it? You do want to use a little bit of onion and garlic. Some recipes don't ask for, garlic, uh, for onion, but I do like adding both. It's a nice pairing. Um, we want to definitely use butter and heavy cream this i actually did run to the store for because there's another recipe i want to make that costs for heavy cream otherwise i would have just used milk and i would have made basically like a thickener so if you have xanthan gum i used to have that a lot when we were on keto use xanthan gum if you don't have heavy cream add that to your milk to thicken it or um since i don't have xanthan gum I was planning on using like a teaspoon of cornstarch with a tablespoon of warm water, whisking it, and then throwing that into the sauce and it would have thickened it up. So that's definitely an alteration. If you don't have heavy whipping cream and you don't want to run to the store, that's what I was going to do. But then I was like, hmm, I want to make something tomorrow that calls for it too. So might as well. <laughs> Let's get back to the ingredients. Um, some recipes call for tomato paste. Others don't. I actually like using it. So we'll be using some tomato paste. All of them call for Parmesan cheese, except I don't have freshly grated one. And I am a-okay using this um, bottled one or this jarred one. The recipes do call for either broth or white wine. I don't have either. So we're going to be using a little bit of beer. So we'll pop this open. We'll be drinking along the way while cooking. And I'll add a little bit to it. It's just going to be like half a cup worth anyways. I usually put beer in my paellas or my arroz con pollo, so I like cooking with beer. What else do we have here? We have some parsley for the ends. And then one of the other alterations is that this, typically people add um, spinach into it. And you can add spinach if you have it. I don't. I have kale and beautiful kale. Look at these beautiful purple leaves. So I'll be adding some kale to it. And that is it. The oil is to pan fry the gnocchi. So let's get to cooking. Today I'm doing my setup a little bit differently. I have you guys on the gimbal <laughs> behind the counter instead of on the tripod behind me. So let us let me know if you like this layout more than the other one. Um, let's go ahead and start with the onions. I am going to um, sliver them. So let's cut off these ends, take off the top layer of skin, slither it and put it to the side. I don't know. I know I've mentioned that in previous videos. So if you didn't see the last video I mentioned it in, the flatter you get your yellow onions, then the sweeter they'll be versus like the big tennis ball looking ones. 
So if you like your onions sweet, try to get them as flat as possible. Want to put some of these mushrooms and onions on top of the pork chops. Now that the onions are done, let's go ahead and grab a few garlic pieces. I think I'm going to go with like four to five pieces. Yeah, let's go with five. We like things garlicky in this house. Is the onion smell bothering you already? Chop off the tip that holds it all together. Take off that skin and then either use your mincer or chop it up. I'm just going to chop it. Right as well. This one came off super easily. I didn't even have to take off the tips in order to take the skin off. I usually do. I'm not going to worry about making them too small. Because like I said, we like our garlic in this house. So I am, we are both a-okay with it being big pieces <laughs> in this house. That's so funny. In this rig, in our teeny tiny 19 foot home. <laughs> I think what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to half a bunch of these cherry tomatoes just so that I can have all my prepping already out of the way. Um, and I don't have to worry about chopping while we're cooking. I forgot about the beer. Let's see. I did say we were gonna drink while cooking today because I don't want the bottle to go to waste if um <laughs> if I only need like half a cup worth before cooking. So Cheers! Thanks for cooking with me. Oh yeah, you know we like our stouts and we like our porters, um, and our brownies. But we went with the cores because Lou um usually makes red eyes with a cheaper version of beers. The cores, Michelob, um, PBRs love red eyes. All right, <laughs> let's get back to chopping. <laughs> That's a good amount. What do you guys think? This is just going to be for this meal, not for the part that I'm storing. This is going to be for the part that I'm storing. So I think we're good. Actually, let's go ahead and do the same with the kale. Let's finish all the prepping. Get the leaves off the stem. Looks like I need to raise that a little bit. Break them down a little bit. It'll cook nicely. It won't soften as much as the spinach does, but it'll still be super delicious. And the color, come on. Oh, this color is gorgeous. This will be enough. Beautiful. So we. All right. So I just threw the mushrooms inside the pan and I basically before I threw them in the pan I put about a teaspoon like regular spoon of butter just to grease the pan and then I threw these in so I'm going to let it sit for a little bit and start wilting down stir it around and then I'll season it with a little bit of pink salt black pepper and a little bit of garlic powder if you've made any of the meals that I made for either the 30 days of RV cooking with you guys or even stuff that I made prior to them because I've been cooking with you guys since we were stationary. Even before then, well, we were in an apartment planning RV live. So if you've seen the Cooking with Angie uh, playlist or Lou, I threw in there because she cooks every so often too. Um, if there's anything that I have made with you guys and then you made it and did your own tweaks to it, 
go back to that video. Let me know that you made it. Tell me what you think about it. Um, comments on the videos really do help our channel grow, especially if they're older videos, because then they get thrown back into like the analytics to get seen again. So sharing is caring. <laughs> Commenting is caring. I already separated my half a cup worth so that I don't drink it all. See how they're looking. Yeah, some of them are looking brown already. So pretty. Let me show you like this one. See how pretty that looks. I want them all to start browning. And salt helps them sweat. So now that I've had it on the pan for a couple minutes, I think I'll go ahead and throw some salt in it now to help it keep sweating out. So just a good layer, as well as some garlic powder because, you know, we want extra garlic on everything. And a little bit of black pepper. Give it a stir. And let it sit for another couple more minutes. Oh my God, these are so huge. <laughs> it practically takes over my entire ladle. <laughs> okay, so they are completely seared. The liquid is completely out. My pan is like satarring. How pretty they're looking. Since I'm gonna throw the onions in here now, I'm gonna turn on the extractor fan so it might get a little loud because the onions really do bother Lou's eyes. So hopefully that's not too loud. Let's go ahead and get the onions in here so that they can start sweating out as well. And to help them sweat and to start layering the flavors, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt to them. Let's break them apart are broken apart pretty much to help them caramelize faster what's going on with this one did i not chop this one yes i did let's see it there we go doesn't want to separate it's holding on to its layers all right Okay, we're basically going to stir these around for a little bit until they get nice and translucent as well. They're going to sweat, so the liquid they let out is going to kind of deglaze the pan a little bit. But we're going to really use that beer to deglaze the pan mostly. I'm going to stir a little bit so that it's well blended. And then I'm going to leave it alone. I'm also going to turn the heat down to like a medium. In the meantime, let's do a medium low. So you'll notice that the onions are like almost getting translucent. The edges are like translucent, whereas the middle is more, um, I guess, white. So al dente. This is a great way to have them if you like a bite in your onion, but also have that soft and sweetness. Um, I'm looking to cook them a little bit more before I separate half of this and obviously that's an extra step i'm doing you don't have to make extra for you know another meal or you can just make an extra batch of the tuscan so like that you can add that onto on top of anything else that would have been good on top of the pork chops Woo! garlic i have some runaway tomatoes down there there's the garlic Oh my god, the smell of that garlic. Yum. Let that cook down for a couple minutes. All right, you guys, this has been in here for a good minute. Those onions are super tender and translucent. And um, the garlic smells amazing. I don't want them to over toast. So I'm going to go ahead and take out like two big tablespoons or two big ladles worth and leave the rest of this for today's meal. Okay, so now what we want to do is add like a 
tablespoon worth of tomato paste. I'm gonna use a regular table, ta like a regular spoon. I'm not using like a, a measuring spoon, but you totally can if you want to. Just eyeballing it. That'll go back in the fridge for something else. Start moving it around so it can get nice and coated. Everything can touch it. Get some of that concentrated tomato. Let's let this tomato paste cook a little bit before we start adding liquids to deglaze the pan. While we're waiting for that tomato paste to get nice and toasty and give it lots of flavor, this is a good time for a sip. And to ask you to comment down below, are you gonna stick to any of the staple ingredients like the uh, sun-dried tomatoes or the spinach? Or would you get creative and try other alterations? If you will try other alterations, let me know down below as well because then next time I can mix up and do something different too. As you know, I like trying different things. Okay, we're ready for some deglazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and add half a cup of beer. You can definitely do white wine if you have white wine. You can do stock if you have chicken stock or vegetable stock, um, fish stock if you're gonna do this over salmon. So I'm gonna go ahead and start deglazing the pan with that beer, nice and softly to get all those good bits and pieces off. And also, I'm gonna go ahead and now throw in the tomato and my purple kale, which you can do spinach and sun-dried tomatoes. Let's start mixing those up too. And all the colors in here. So beautiful. So beautiful. I'm just going to let it sit for about a minute. And actually, let me not let it sit for a minute. This calls for about four tablespoons of butter. And I usually don't like cooking with this. This I typically use for like toast um i usually have like my blocks of just butter butter and salt um but i'm out of that right now so i will go ahead and stick to this and it does call for four i have a teaspoon like a regular teaspoon here um so i'm gonna use that like four hefty ones and the last thing to add is gonna be the heavy cream and some parmesan cheese it's a super decadent if you can't tell already all right, the gnocchi is actually looking pretty good over here. Let's show you. There are some pieces that have gotten a little bit more charred than others, but that is really delicious there. So I've been stirring it around to try to get it them <laughs> as much coated as possible. So let's bring this back down. And since the highlight of this dish is the Tuscan mushrooms, we are going to get back to that. All right, we want, it calls for a cup, but I'm just going to do three quarters of a cup because I do think that a cup is really high <laughs> in calories. And Lou is not a big fan of things being too saucy anyways, so I think three quarters of a cup is better. Now we're going to let that keep cooking. Let all those flavors blend. You don't want to cook it too long because you don't want it to evaporate too much because you definitely want some of that sauciness. So, oh, I should have taken a picture of it before I put that cream in there because the colors really changed. Now I don't see the purple anymore. Mmm, <laughs> God, this is going to be so good. I bet you wish you were here to have a taste test or a full plate worth, huh? Let me let this sit for a couple minutes. Stir that gnocchi one more time and put a bowl of spring mix on the side for Lou. Because she needs her salads with her meals. So I am done. I actually completely forgot about the Parmesan cheese. I should have stuck it in there like right after I did the heavy whipping cream. So it could have like 
melt it and blend it in with it but i guess that's not such a big deal because it's not like it's going to melt it is grated parmesan cheese from the jar that like a real one um so i think it's okay not a big deal i'm leaving the parmesan cheese out so that we can just sprinkle it on top of the meal um after we're served i already did her spring mix i have some italian dressing so that's gonna go well with it and it is time to serve let me give you guys a close-up of it before i take the thumbnail picture it is looking so good so here is the tuscan mushroom i did garnish it with some parsley a few little sprigs around and then a little doll up there in the center just so that it brightens it up and looks pretty for the picture and then we have the gnocchi over there some pieces are a little bit more charred than others but that's all flavor right there especially since that was done in butter not oil <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's get this picture. And I'm on the fence about doing the taste test because our dinette is a hot mess. And you'll see Lou is still in bed. <laughs> so I don't know if we're eating in bed or what we're doing. We need to discuss that now off camera. <laughs> Lucy is very hangry, but it's because she refuses mm -hmm. to eat her food. Mm -hmm. She just wants table food. Um, she doesn't want to eat her food. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's hangry. But we're gonna keep pushing the food even though we're gonna try to tame her keep her quiet with some of this <laughs> for a little while <laughs> for a little while <sighs> ready because i i can't wait i'm like dying since you mentioned it earlier today i've been like what i'm gonna wait salivating. for her to try it that mushroom she got a big piece of mushroom mm. there oh it's <laughs> so good oh. is it so good you know I don't taste as I oh. cook. I rarely do. I oh. should do that more often, but it's I rarely do. Got garlicky taste, a little bit of <laughs> onion. Oh, stop. <laughs> got a creaminess it to it also. It's really good. And even though, mm, even though I cooked those mushrooms until all the liquid came out, they rehydrated with the beer and the tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. So they're meaty still. They're very meaty. They're not dry. <laughs> mm -mm. They're very meaty. We were just getting rid of the water. So I'm going to go in for a gnocchi with a tomato. They're mixing and everything gnocchi. in. <laughs> You're mixing. That's not like you. Yeah, of course. Like a pasta. That's a me thing. I was, that's <laughs> how I was going to eat it. Like a pasta. You have to have sauce in your gnocchi. Yeah, I was tempted to just mix it all in for the picture. And I was like, well, really, this video is about the mushroom, oh, the Tuscan oh, mushroom, right? Oh. I know it's just a side piece, so I don't oh. want to include it oh. in it. I see it as a sauce for the gnocchi. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. Yeah. You can put this over mm -hmm. your steak, over your pork chop. The way it's traditionally made with salmon or chicken. It's so good. I would even put this over a baked potato. Oh. The, the mushroom has a... A hearty, beefy flavor. Uh, <laughs> and every so often you get like the, the onion, which gives it like a little bit of a sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> well, uh, this is a repeat. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this and it inspires you to make your own version of it as well. If you're interested in it and you like it, please give me a big thumbs up. Let me know down below what are some traditional items or substitutions you would use, like I asked earlier. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. While we're dropping cooking vlogs here and there, um, we're sharing our travel life from Florida to Washington. And we look forward to inspiring you for your next vacation or RV destination. Bye, guys.